you're in the market for an imaging camera that won't break the bank, guess what? Vivor has you covered. The all new Vivor SC240N. Thermal imaging camera extraordinaire. Shout out to Vivor, thanks so much for sending the SC240 in, in for this review. Wow, I'm telling you, thermal imaging madness. It is insane, the amount of thermal imaging cameras we're seeing on the market these days. They're all becoming more affordable, more powerful, and at the end of the day, that's a good thing for you guys. SC240N is a perfect example of getting premium quality at a not so premium price. 2.8 inch screen, 240 by 180 infrared image resolution, and a photo capture frequency of 20 hertz. The sensitivity on this is just under 40 MK, so that will suffice for most of your thermal imaging needs. Okay, so what do you get in the box? Well, that's a darn good question, Taryn. Of course, you get your thermal imaging camera, and we will take a look at that in just a minuto. But nice black box from Vivor. Handheld thermal camera tells you exactly what you're getting. Uh, nice packaging. Let's open up that box. And camera itself was housed in this nice styrofoam inlay. And they also give you a nice soft case as well. Probably not as robust as those hard cases. Uh, but that being said, it's better than nothing. Included the box is both a calibration certificate and your product certificate. As well, Viver gives us this nice little 16 gigabyte SD card if you want to save your images for later analysis down the road. How could I forget? You also get your USB charging cable. USB to USB-C. Yeah. Alrighty, let's take a look at that camera. One of the things you'll notice as soon as you pull this out of the box, wow, this is quality. Very good, very robust, a solid thermal camera, a solid handheld thermal camera. Uh, excellent attention to detail. You have that nice rubber inlay all around the thermal camera itself, and it really makes a difference. Even that grip, it's not a plasticky grip. No, it's a really nice tactile rubber grip that is just, oh, it's amazing. They, they did a really great job. Size-wise, it is the same as that Kaiweets, just perhaps a little bit narrower. And yes, the display size is a tiny bit smaller, but that being said, basically identical. In case you're wondering, that flashlight is really bright, definitely. Oh man, that's gonna help you see in the dark, I guarantee. Simply to enable or disable, hold down on the flashlight button like so, and bada boom, bada bing. Man, oh man. Another nice feature with the Vivor is the fact that they give you this little tripod mount. That's right, if you wanna stick the thermal imaging camera, maybe for long-term exposures or what have you, you can mount it to a tripod. Yes, they've got you covered. Also conveniently located at the top, we have both our charging input, the USB-C, as well as the flash drive uh, slot. So there you go. And that's all nicely protected by this all weatherproof cover. Awesome. Locating at the front of the unit, we have our digital camera, followed by the infrared lens, that nice big round circle, LED lamp, two of them, and of course, the trigger button. Trigger action on this camera is just a joy. Uh, very responsive. You can pull this trigger hundreds of times a day. Your fingers aren't going to get tired. No worries there. Uh, yeah, good mechanical action. And once again, I have to point out the fact that that rubber inlay follows the circumference here at the outer side of that lens housing. So really nice stuff. I mean, if you bang this, it's protected. It's going to take a lot of the bumps and wear and tear. So this will definitely help for long term longevity. Turn the camera on is really simple. Hit that power button. Bada boom, bada bing. About two seconds and you get that Vivor logo just letting you know that the system is now booting up. 
So there we are with our GUI telling us the system is initializing. Now in terms of bootability, bootability, is that even a word? This is a little bit oh, slower than some other thermal imaging cameras. But that being said, if you're patient enough, 15, 20 seconds and there you are. Bada boom, bada bing. Once you're in that screen, you have total control and look at that. By default, we are in our thermal imaging main screen. If you're new to the world of imaging cameras, fear not. Hey, everybody has to start from somewhere. Screen, very verbose. Let's start here at the top, of course. This tells us the temperature right now where we are, 19.5 degrees Can Celsius. Can change that to Fahrenheit as well. Here we have our max and min. So basically, maximum and minimum. And the sensors automatically will go to the hot zone. Here we have our standard, well, they call it a rainbow display, but it tells us the different variants of heat. Of course, white is the hottest, whereas the red, blue, black, that's the coolest part of the image. Here at the top right, we have our battery level indicator. You can see it's fully charged. And at the bottom, we have something called our emissivity. Here, E equals 0 0.85, which is pretty well a standard baseline for lots of different things. Yeah, look. They're going to use 0 0.90, 0 0.85 as a baseline. Now, that doesn't mean you should always have it on that setting because emissivity depends on your subject. Let's take a look at those buttons. On the far left, we have our play button, which is simple enough. If you're looking at different images, that's all you need to do. Below that, we have our flashlight to turn on those two LEDs in the front. On the top right, we have our return. And of course, that big bright red button is the power on, power off. In the middle, we have our basically, it's like a control pad, up, down, left, right. That's how you move throughout the menu. Okay, let's actually get into the submenu. So hit that middle select, and we have three choices by default. We have our measurement, we have the palette, and we have our settings. Now, let's take a look at palette, for instance. Here you can change. By default, we have the iron. that You see that everywhere for thermal imaging. Next is rainbow, white hot, and like a monochrome black hot. But truth be told, I do prefer the old default of iron. Now, once you're happy with that, just click enter and away you go. Let's go back into the settings. Here we can change the arrows. We measurement sensors so we can change the colors, the hot spot locations, the cold spots, the whole nine yards. So a lot of customizability here. And of course, on the far right, we have our settings. Let's go into settings, shall we? Measure parameters, temperature scales, photo setting, temperature units, state and time, you name it, it is all there under settings. Let's just take a peek at, oh, let's do the temperature scale, shall we? So right now we are set between minus 20 and 150 degrees Celsius. We can increase that for hotter zones by selecting 100 to 350 degrees. And there you go, simple as that. We're now in the higher temperature scale. Yeah, it's just that simple. Once we're in that setting, hit the back button and there you go. We have alerts as well that we can do. Photos, I mean, sky's the limit. It's very intuitive tell you, you don't even need a, man, a manual. I mean, this is so intuitive. You just get around, open it up, play a bit, and soon you will be a handheld thermal camera pro. Here's another comparison between the Vivor and a Unity. Now, this is a big Unity, but uh, yeah, look at the difference in screen size. That Unity has twice the size but it's also a much more expensive unit. But that being said, ergonomically, um, I don't know, which one do you wanna carry around for half the day? This is definitely gonna be easier on the hands. This is a monster. Now this is a fantastic monster, but nonetheless, it's a big, big unit. And here's another angle, same idea. Once again, that big, big display on the Unity. Um, powerful and big compared to the Vivor, but nonetheless, that Vivor is still very nice Except looking. The smaller display of the Vivor still can pack a punch. And uh, quality-wise, they're both set for 85 emissivity right now, so they are identical. And uh, hey, pretty good performance, Vivor. Now, sadly enough, in the Vivor, we have no lens protection, uh, no cap cover, what have you. So dust, dirt, who knows what might get into that housing at some point. So a protective cover would have been really appreciated. That camera been on for a while, and look at the white, look at that heat signature. That is hot, hot, hot. Here we are now in the furnace room and check out that hot water heater. You can see those pipes are definitely uh, warm. Once again, white is hot. So the whiter it is, the hotter it is. And you can follow that trail all the way. So if you're troubleshooting, for instance, in HVAC for 
perhaps, or perhaps you're just a home do-it-yourselfer and you're trying to find a problem and save yourself a few bucks, getting a tool like this, a test instrument like this, is an investment. It's gonna save you some money. Another cool feature is you can set up a gallery mode. Well, it's set up, it's done for you automatically. All you have to do is press that play button after you've taken some pics and look at that. Bada boom, bada bing, you can cycle through them with that arrow if you wanna do a close up. Bada boom, bada bing, source them on that SD card indefinitely. Closing thoughts of the Vivorth handheld thermal imaging camera. Oh, this one is a keeper. Great quality images. Price versus performance versus build quality is really, really good. Sure, you can find thermal imaging cameras with better specs and bigger displays, but at the end of the day, do you really need them? For the average home user, even semi-pro, I think this Vivo model has you covered. Now, it wasn't all stars and spangled banners, so to speak. No, there was a couple of things that kind of ticked me off. One of them was the fact that that trigger mechanism itself, sometimes just a little bit laggy when you're taking a lot of pictures. It's nice to have a little bit more responsive feel when you're getting down to business. Every now and then as well, you have a slight delay, a little bit of a jitter, which, you know, kind of goes with the territory per se at this thermal imaging price range. And yes, this handheld thermal camera definitely needs a protective cover for the lens. Hey, at the end of the day, I really enjoyed using this unit. I used it a lot. I did a lot with it and I had zero issues. The Vivor thermal imaging camera extraordinaire gets a solid 3.5 out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing. <laughs>